Hi, it's Colleen and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to return to the 18th century. It's been about four months since I did my series on making an 18th century outfit. And if you've watched that series, you know I made an entire outfit from the skin out. I made a shift, I made stays, I made a bum pad, I made a couple of petticoats, I made a bodice, a stomacher, and all of the accessories that go with it. It was a super fun project and I learned a lot. So if you haven't watched that series, go ahead and do that. The bodice I made was actually intended to be a wearable mock-up. I really wanted to make the final bodice out of this fabric. Then I realized I didn't have quite enough and I also cut my finger so I had to stop sewing for that video and of course from there I got distracted rearranging my sewing room and I had a show that I had to make costumes for and then there's been a few other videos I've posted in the meantime so finally four months later we're returning to the 18th century and I'm ready to dive in again this fabric was given to me by a friend so I only had what I had and it wasn't quite enough to make a bodice but last week I was at the thrift store and guess what I found more of the same fabric in fact there's more in what I found last week than what I got from my friend originally. So I'm really excited to be able to dive back into the 18th century and to make the bodice that I really wanted to make in the first place. And actually, now that I have some extra fabric, I'm gonna try one of the variations that American Dutch has posted online for adapting this pattern to be a little more historically accurate. And those instructions explain how to add a skirt to the bottom of the bodice as well as to add cuffs to the sleeves. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna draft the pattern to make those alterations and we'll sew up a new bodice. Because the last project was just a wearable mock-up, there were some things that needed to be changed at the end. I realized that the back was just a little bit too long and overall it was just a little bit big. So I'm really glad that I left some notes in the file about those adjustments so I can make them right away when I pattern out the new bodice. The other thing I did that was actually kind of smart, I left a note with measurements over my undergarments. So I don't have to put my undergarments on right now and take the measurements in order to get started, I can just go right off of my notes from four months ago. I had to make a lot of changes to the commercial pattern in order to fit my body. So the pattern that I can start off with today is already a custom fit to my body. I'll just make these few adjustments and then add on to it. And that's really the nice thing about any era is once you get started and you have all the underpinnings and you've gone through the work of customizing a bodice to fit you or a dress to fit you, then you can make infinite variations on that because all of that work will go to the next project and the next project and it just kind of is a shortcut, I guess. It's gonna be great to have another bodice to go with my existing petticoat. And I actually have a few more 18th century projects in mind and I'll tell you about those at the end of this video. To recap my progress to date, I made my previous 18th century costume based on this pattern. This is Simplicity 8161 designed by American Duchess. And I made the bodice from view B. But you can see it's just a straight bodice. It does not have any skirting around the bottom. This time I'd like to make a skirted bodice. And American Duchess has posted this document online, which is a series of hacks for this pattern. And these are the instructions for making the skirted panel that would go along the bottom of the bodice and it would be sort of a straight skirt meaning that there wouldn't be ruffles or any additional fullness in the bottom of that but on her blog lauren of american duchess said she was referencing this book and in particular this pattern here and i like the way this looks you can see there's pleating there and there's some pleating here at the side seam and here are the patterns for the skirting on that particular bodice i think what i'm going to do is a hybrid of this pattern and this pattern. If you search Casaquins online, you'll see that there are two types, one with a waist seam and one without. I needed to choose one with a waist seam because of the limitations of my fabric. I didn't have any pieces big enough to cut the bodice and skirt all in one. I counted the grid squares, each of which is supposed to be an inch, and calculated that the depth of this skirting is 11 inches. So that seems like a great place to start, and it indicates how you should put those pleats in there. On this document, when you go to the next page, there are instructions for adding pleats at the seams. So basically you start with your original sort of a curved shape and then you just extend wherever you want there to be a pleat. So you cut it in half, you extend, you add on inches and that gives you what you need for the pleating. I didn't want to bore you with all the calculations, so I went ahead and did this part off camera. But basically, you take your waist measurement, which for me is 33, and you divide it in two. 
16 and a half inches, that's this measurement from here to here. Then you decide about how long you want your skirting to be, and that becomes this measurement from here to here. I'm starting with 11 inches, and I can always adjust it if I don't like the way it looks on my mock-up. Then you divide this paper into five parts, and you cut them almost but not all the way through the top. And then that allows you to spread them out like this. You maintain this measurement here, but you can increase the measurement along the bottom by inserting paper in the gaps. This is where the rest of the math comes in. You have to know your hip measurement over your bum pad, your stays, your, your petticoats, everything you're wearing on the bottom. For me, that number is 47. And again, we're only working for half, so I have to divide that in two, which is 23 and a half. The trick is to subtract your waist measurement from the hem measurement and then divide that number by the number of sections. So 23.5 minus 16.5 leaves me with 7. And if I divide 7 by 5, I get 1.4 for each of these little gaps. So in order to have enough to go around my hips, the minimum I can add here is 1.4 inches. I can add more and I can make it be full and roughly, but the minimum to go around my hips has to be 1.4 inches. So American Duchess instructs you to add that amount here, 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 and here, as well as here and here. So you have to have all of those pieces put in there in order to have it hang correctly in the front and in the back. All right. According to the instructions from American Duchess, this should now be enough to go around half of my waist and half of my hip and still fall straight from the center back down and the center front down. So let's go test it out on the dress form. Keep in mind that this does not fit my dress form, but it's close enough that I can at least use it for something like this. The pattern that I made is not quite wide enough. You can see it doesn't go down here on the center back like I thought it would. Should come about like this. And in the front, the image on the Patterns of Fashion dress shows that it comes down and then kind of comes away like this. I could modify the front of the jacket just a little bit to match up with this because it does open up. It's not that far off in the front, but it definitely needs a little more oomph in the back. It worked kind of but not exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add some extra paper here and some extra paper here and play around with the shape. All right, I'm not sure what happened, but I did end up adding a big chunk right here. I added another couple pieces throughout and then a big chunk in the front. I'm still not quite where I'd like to be, but I think that's easy enough to just fix on the final. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm just surprised it required so much extra fiddling because I have my waist measurement and my hip measurement. So I'm not sure what went wrong. Hi, editing Colleen here. They say hindsight is 2020. And of course, now that I've had a chance to finish the project and reflect upon it, the answer of what went wrong is obvious. I used my waist measurement, my actual waist measurement straight around the waist point. And this pattern has a pointed front. So the bottom of that hem is a larger measurement than my actual waist is. And that puts you a little bit further down. So the, the measurement around where that skirt needs to fall is also gonna be a little bit bigger as you go down the skirt. My problem was I did not start with the correct measurements. I decided that instead of jumping right into the full mock-up, I would go ahead and just mock up this piece out of fabric. And I'm really glad that I did. Fabric behaves quite a bit differently than paper, obviously. Fabric has a grain line and paper doesn't. And when you're sewing and cutting stuff out of fabric, you have to pay attention to the grain line. So I had initially put that whole shape Shape where I had the grain line going straight up and down at this front piece. Once I started pinning it on though, I started seeing some wrinkling and some problems kind of developing back here. And I decided to go ahead and just play with it. And I started folding out the fabric along this line here. And you can see I've taken out quite a bit along the front side and along the top waistline. So that grain line is going at an angle right here instead of straight up and down. That's something I noticed in the Patterns of Fashion pattern. It's on an angle on this piece. And 
it, once I got the fabric to go in the correct direction, it made a big difference in how it lays. The problem with the American Duchess hack is that she does not indicate grain lines. So it's really important that you go ahead and mock this up with an actual piece of fabric and see how it's laying. But see, that takes out some of this that I had added in in order to get the paper to fit around it. And I mean, this is several inches right up here, several inches that I folded out and down and around. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. And that way I can mock it up with this shape. The other thing I'm going to do is do that curved seam here. This is looking really good. I'm gonna play with this maybe a little bit more and then I'll show you the final shape of this piece compared to where I started with my mock-up. Here you can see the new shape compared to the shape from the mock-up. It's worth doing the extra fitting, I think with actual fabric. So here's the grain line and it's in the same place that it was. Obviously the fabric is still on the same grain, but you can see how the angle has changed. So this would be like where the point of my bodice comes down. You can see how that angle has diverged. This one's going this way and that one's going that way. You know, by the time you get back over here, this is uh, the, the grain lines going this way. If I cut this into two pieces, I may adjust the grain line on this back piece because on patterns of fashion, that back piece has the grain line going this way and currently on mine, it's going this way. Well, this is pretty exciting. So there's my mock-up. That is with the skirt that just fits. So it's straight, there's no pleating, there's no ruffling, there's no extra fabric. Again, this does not fit my dress form but you can see how that shape is in the front. So a couple of things that I did to make this look more like the Patterns of Fashion piece is I put more of an angle on this shoulder seam here and I moved the side seam to the back. So this is what I'm gonna try on with all of my undergarments and I'm not gonna put sleeves on, I'm just gonna try on this to make sure this is still fitting me correctly and that this is working over all of the undergarments. But you can see how that's coming together and I think it's looking pretty awesome given uh, the fact that I don't know what I'm doing and I am figuring this out as I go. Here's my initial try on of the mock-up and I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. So the proportions of this right here, the bod main bodice part should be good. It should fit me the way it fit me before because I'm wearing the same undergarments and everything. What I suspect is I've either lost a little bit of weight or tightened down a little bit tighter. It might be a combination of both, but I'm seeing quite a lot of wrinkling in here. And I think the waist is just too long, which was Something I had noted on my previous bodice and I already shortened it, but I think I need to shorten it just a little bit more. If I take out a half an inch there, then it lays much nicer. And then it surprisingly is too big right here. There's a lot of extra. So I did cut in where I think those seams are gonna go because I wanted to see which of the fit issues might be the result of just needing a little bit of ease in through the hips it didn't solve everything. So I've got to shorten the waist, but I also need to take out a pretty good chunk of fabric right back and through here all the way up, which is a surprise to me because to, to me, this should fit exactly the same way as it did before. But I guess my body's changed or I've laced in differently or something. So I'm going to try taking it up here, taking it in, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches right in through this lower back and then maybe just a wedge, right? Take a wedge out. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing the back, of course. I just don't wanna keep pulling it forward because the more I pull it forward, the more these wrinkles show up. So I think I need to get this seam directly in the center back and then just tighten it up a little bit from there. And that should do the trick. This is unaltered and this is altered and it's fitting much better. I raised the waist seam and now I think I need to lower it back down again because it's right here and my natural waist is right, right here. So I think what really was the problem is that this was not the right, <laughs> this was not in the right spot. So when I raised the waist seam, it put this skirt kind of where it needs to be. So actually I just need to shave some off of the top of the skirt. What's weird is that I did the math 
when I made the little skirt piece, it fit perfectly onto the bodice on my previous pattern. I don't know what's going on and why I'm having to make so many changes to the pattern, but I have taken out a significant amount from the center back seam. Uh, and I kind of tapered it up here. I'm going to need to take out quite a bit of the arm side, like right underneath here. So I've marked where the new line needs to be, which again, this was not an issue on the other costume. I've trimmed off uh, quite a bit off of the front and now I've turned it over again. And then look at this. I'm still taking out a huge amount from the shoulder. Look at that. That's a huge amount. And I don't know why. So I did move the seam back a little bit on my shoulder. That wouldn't account for this extra stuff here. So I don't know if my body has changed since October. Uh, I don't know if it's the shape of this and the way that the, um, the way it pulls or something. You can see that now that leaves a big gap here, which is fine because I'm going to put in you know, some extra fabric to make it have a box pleat, but I just don't understand what's gone on here. So here's where the back is. You can see how much I've had to fold out of there. Um, I, I just am not sure why this has needed so much work, but it sure has. User error. I bet it's user error. It has taken a lot of trial and error to get to this point, but this is what the skirt piece will look like. This is half of the garment and it's going to be in two pieces. So the first piece will come about to here and there will be a seam allowance and then this piece will come to there and we'll seam it. That way the seam is hiding in the pleat. There will be a total of six of these big pleats across the back. Anyway, it took quite a bit to get here um, and it's a lot of slashing and spreading and putting it on over my stays and my false rump and the petticoats and then just looking to see where the fabric had tension. So I did end up on um, this version here having to cut in and add about one and three fourths inches right here. So you basically just cut and see where it wants to lay so that it's smooth and then on the next variation, you can just add in 1.75 inches to this bottom curve and leave the top the same. So I kind of did that and just played around with it until everything laid the way I wanted it to lay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all these pieces apart and make a paper pattern for them and then cut out a lining and try it on. So that would be both sides of the lining, just as if it would be made entirely. And then if I need to make any adjustments, I can. You can see this is a hot mess, but this is where I started. So a lot of what I added onto here and here actually went away and got put into this spot instead. Before I try on the lining though, for real, I need to do something about these two pieces here. This is the bum pad that I made according to Simplicity 8162. If you look at my previous videos, I have struggled with this thing from the beginning. I should have made a smaller size. I should have stuffed it less. I did put in some tufting and that controlled the loft and made it much, much better, but it still is just doing something weird. And I think the problem is that as it comes around here, it makes the skirt sort of sit up a little high and it looks like I've got an inner tube around my waist. It's very frustrating and I think I'm going to just cut this off about here on both sides. The other thing that's really contributing to the spare tire is my stays. I love my stays. I love them. You can see how this is conformed to my shape and I'm struggling with this bottom part of the front tab sort of taken off like a ski slope. So I have a large bust that makes this come out this way. It hits my waist right here and then it goes out over the swell of my stomach and sticks out. So in addition to the bum pad kind of creating that extra bulk around the waist, this is then sticking out a good inch to an inch and a half from my actual body right here in the front. It's like it, it does this. This gap right here, that's what it's doing across the swell of my belly. And there's just not a lot I can do about my pooch. I've had babies. I had a C-section. I got a pooch no matter how much I weigh. I think I'm going to undo this binding along the bottom and just see if I can't put in a couple of pieces of more rigid boning in there. So we're going to try 
and streamline the silhouette. Here's the adjusted bump pad and it's just over my street clothes, but you can see I ended it right here. So once my skirts are on there and they hold it down, uh, it should be much better than it was. This is what I have now and essentially I just cut two pieces of boning like this and I put them in so that the curve faces this way and that means once my body gets in there it's got to fight against that curve. So now you can see the difference in how these two pieces are sitting. Here is my basic outfit with all the underpinnings on and this is with the adjusted bum pad and the adjusted stays. Huge difference. I mean, it's much, much better than it was. The tabs are staying much more flat than they were. And I've lost a lot of the bulk that was coming around the front here by cutting off the bum pad. So the bum pad now ends right here. And then this can lay a lot more flat along the front. Uh, but let's go ahead and give this jacket a try. So this is the lining. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is so much better. I think this is going to work out really well. You can see my pleats back here. Um, they'll have more structure once they have the other fabric on there. This is just a really lightweight cotton, so it's wanting to collapse a little bit more than the final fabric will. <laughs> but that looks great. Here we go. We'll get a close look at this. Yeah, that looks really good. I will have a stomacher. Whether I use this stomacher or make another one, I don't know. But that's a that's a problem for future me. One thing I have seen people do that I think I will also do because it seems to make a huge difference is you put lacing panels right in through here. So you just stitch it onto your jacket on either side and that way you can lace it closed and pull it in tight. Otherwise, there's really no way to make sure that this is fitting you exactly right. So you would lace it in tight and still have room to put a stomacher down the middle uh, and then you'd have your trim which would cover up the stitching line. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. But uh, yeah, this is exactly what I was hoping it would turn out to be. So this is excellent progress. I will report back when I get the real fabric cut out and sewn and I'll start putting everything together. Well, this seems like a great place to end part one of this two part series. I was gonna make one video, but it's gotten pretty long and I think it'd be better to break it up. So now you've seen the process of patterning and fitting this new jacket that I'm making. And the next video will show how I actually make it as well as a petticoat and a stomacher and yet another adjustment to my 18th century shift. I just can't get over how awful that pattern has been. <laughs> so anyway, stay tuned for part two on this series, which should be up in about a week. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen here. If you like it and you want to make sure you don't miss part two, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I've also been posting regular updates on this project over on my Instagram account. So be sure to follow me over there. I'll put the handle right down below. I look forward to seeing you there and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thanks and have a great day.